convinced that Earth is being visited by intelligently controlled extraterrestrial spacecraft. Furthermore, we're dealing with a cosmic water gate, as I like to call it. Governments are covering up what they know, understandably in some instances. But, uh, and I try to make people aware that there's an enormous amount of evidence, data, solid information. It's not just lights in the sky. I don't care about lights in the sky. It's about skinwalking range phenomena. I'm a field investigator of the paranormal and UFO and many other stuff. We don't know exactly how to call them because they're not from this world. They're coming from another world and they have specific activities. And if we want to know what is this, we have to investigate, we have to research. Um, lately, the last one or two years, I met very interesting people who has access to that range and they're very good my friends. They told me stories about that area and I'm continuing uh, investigating and hopefully one day I'll have access also to the, to the range. So the, my point is just to go there and uh, feel it fill the field in um, that activities. Um, as far as I know, there's uh, portals to another dimension is opening. You can see stuff who is coming from nowhere and going to nowhere. You can see very strange and unusual animals. You cannot say exactly what kind of day. There's something between uh, dogs and something between dogs and bears uh, with different sizes, unusual sizes for dogs. Um, also, is, uh, that place is a place for, um, how I say, a few seconds ago, it's a portal. So by this portals it's coming also not only uh, creatures from another dimensions, but also it's coming uh, UFOs and different uh, extraterrestrial beings with different kind of nature. Uh, one of my friend who was there, and um, it's she, and I'm not going to say her name now because I promise do not say it. She said that she saw a reptilian person, and the first of all, she was scared. Uh, when she saw that, because it's unusual, very tall guy, and um, with red eyes. We had some very good friends that bought that ranch, and when and they were just farmers, good people, honest people. And when they moved there, they seen some well, very. What is the name of these people? Uh, yeah, Terry and Gwen Sherman. Okay and they seen some miraculous things, some scary things. Like it frightened them. Um, I can't, I, you know, it's been so many years ago, mm -hmm. I don't know if I remember everything, but I do know that Gwen was frightened and she seen things, she, things disappeared, things moved. Things like cows? Yeah, yeah, I think there was, I think there was, there was. There was quite a few mutilations of cows. Mm -hmm. The reproductive parts was removed. One afternoon, I was driving home with my daughter, late afternoon, 
and there was a ball of clear light oh. crossed across the sky and in front of us and several cars stopped to, to watch that. How big was that light? It was very big. It, it was... Like a moon or smaller? Well, like a car. A, oh, a like car a size coming across the sky and it took it took a couple of minutes to cross the sky and I don't know if it was a... Slowly or fast? Moving. Kind of slow because it took a couple of minutes and we all pulled over. One night we looked out, we have a big, big window in our living room and my daughter-in-law and I both seen a huge green light probably about 20 feet off the ground and going really fast and went down across the bottom of our hayfield. I, I also know the people that lived there. Uh -huh. and know what the, kind of people they were? Farmers, yeah. very, very good, kind of solid people, people honest uh -huh. and trustworthy and they moved their little family there and as she said had a lot of mysterious occurrences in that house and it got to be a problem with the children and with them and they felt for their safety and their mental health and they left. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then they seen other things too, things move, things, strange noises, lights. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was enough for them, they, they left. They saw lights, they saw, uh, personages like humans not like humans so non-human I, I wouldn't I don't know I didn't see them yeah but strange things yeah. strange lights strange holes in the sky they call them holes in the sky mm -hmm. I have heard that the land was cursed back in the early Indian time and that even some of the tribal members today say they knew many 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 years ago to stay away from there and that's what the stories lead up to is that that the area is cursed and because of the fighting and that that we did with the navajos you know because of the women horses and that and going down there raiding villages during that time and so that was contributed to having them come and retaliate against back with us and that and so as the story goes is that they put a curse in that area on the land for the utes and that and at the time when you know people the pioneers started coming around you know getting land and stuff and that then uh, whoever got the land there ended up getting that land and it was told to them that that was cursed land in that so and skin walking actually is a real phenomenon it's not uh, science fiction no it's a uh, it's a um, it's real like a witchcraft like witchcraft if you believe in it to where you can you use it to your benefit and I know there was some people talking about that skinwalking mm -hmm. and then the back east Indians you know back east in America there that they use that for battle mm -hmm. they used it to fight other tribes and stuff right. and everything yeah. to where they could help them benefit and win over to that mm -hmm. area and that and to me it, I believe that it still happens that you still can use that power because it's a dark power right. that you use and then you call upon to you know hurt or you know, make people sick or witch someone like that. Right. It was the family that owned it back in the 90s, uh -huh. uh, early 90s up to 2000, and then they ended up selling it to the Bigelow Corporation. Yeah. And then he was over that for a while, I believe, and then he ended up, I guess, selling that to another private owner now. And so he's in charge of that. And then the stuff that accumulated with their, um, I guess the scientific um, uh, research research and stuff like that then the stuff that they found and what was going on in the findings and everything like that um, what do you think people hiding over there yeah, it could be research could be military government it could be entities maybe I heard of portals down in the area when they were doing the scientific research just could be a variety of different things. Just, you know, we might not even know what 
lies down here but you know you hear the stories that come from the scientists people people that owned it previously you know from news people or reporters um, people like you in your field that go out and do research and stuff on areas and that so it's just a array of everything that comes together That's true because you don't want to have that with you, you know, following you around and stuff and just depending on where you're going because you can bring entities with you. You know, they're just not secluded to that one place. You know, they can latch on to you, be with you. You can't, you wouldn't even know it until, you know, you feel a presence, you feel something, you know, your hair, your, you know, hair on your neck stand up, something eerie, something that doesn't seem right, you know, stuff moving around in your house or things turning off and on, something bothering you at night. You know, 